Ben. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Hannah. Thanks so much for inviting me over to your new apartment. I have so much to show you, Hannah. My mom and I just moved into this apartment last week, so it's still a little messy. That's okay. I was scared to move in at first, but now I feel better because you're here. Aw, that's nice to hear, Gabby. Moving can definitely be hard. You were pretty brave to have moved to a new place. Thanks, Hannah. People have told me before that I have superpowers. Maybe bravery is one of my superpowers. Okay, now it's time for me to give you a tour. I can't wait. Let's go. This is our bedroom. My mom and I are sharing one for now. But I have my very own big kid bed. That's awesome, Gabby. It also looks like you have a lot of cool toys. I sure do. Next is our kitchen. My mom loves to cook. She makes amazing waffles. That sounds delicious. Gabby, just hearing about those waffles is making me pretty hungry. Me too. This is our bathroom. I love to take bubble baths on the weekends. Sounds awesome, Gabby. Sounds pretty relaxing to me. So relaxing. Well, Gabby, thank you so much for showing me around your new apartment. It seems pretty cozy. Wait, I have an idea, Gabby. What if we spend today's episode talking more about the places that people live and the science behind it? I love that! Let's do it! Let's go! The place we live is called our environment. Environments can either be built or natural. A built environment is a place for people by people. This can be a school, an apartment complex, a library, anything like that. Built environments can be different sizes, like large buildings or tiny shops. Natural environments are made up of living and non-living things that occur naturally, so without the help of humans. These can be trees, oceans, large rivers, small rivers, mountains, or rainforests. Let's play a little game to figure out if something is a built environment or a natural environment. When you see an image on the screen, say natural environment or built environment. Ready? Let's go. Built environment. A house is built by a person. Natural environment. A forest occurs naturally without the help of humans. Great. Natural environment. The ocean occurs without the help of humans. An apartment building is a built environment. Good job, everybody. Great job identifying the different environments. The people who design built environments are called architects. Architects make sure that buildings look good and that they're safe. Let's be architects in this next activity. All right, Hannah. So for this activity, we're only going to use two things straws, and tape. That's it? Yep. But Katie, this is gonna be really hard. Just straws and tape? And we have to follow a couple of rules. Well, what rules? Our structure has to be at least one foot tall. It has to be able to support the weight of a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, we only have five minutes to build our structure. Bye. 
five minutes, one foot tall, hold a ball, and five minutes. That's gonna be tough, Katie, but yeah. I'm up for the challenge. I'm glad. So why don't we get started? Let's do it. Great work, scientists. Now it's time to test our structures. All right, Katie, the first rule was that it needed to be one foot tall. Let's see. All right. It looks like yours is over a foot tall. Definitely. Check. Your turn, Katie. It looks like mine is over a foot tall. Perfect. Check. All right. The second rule is that it has to hold the weight of a ball for 10 seconds. All right. Let's try. Uh-oh. You almost made it halfway. I did. It started to kind of lean like this. Hmm. All right, Katie, let's try yours. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! ten! And it's still going. Nice job, Katie. Huh, it looks like your structure was able to hold the weight of the ball, but mine wasn't. What's different about our structures that might make one stronger than the other? Well, Hannah, it looks like yours really relies on squares. I see that, Katie. Squares are actually kind of a weaker shape. Hmm, if you'll excuse me. See how when you apply pressure to the square, it kind of buckles? Oh yeah, look at that. When I apply pressure to one side, it starts to kind of tilt like this. Ah. Whereas my structure was made out of triangles like this. When you apply pressure to the top, it's not buckling. Whoa. It just stays in place. That's really cool. This is why architects typically use triangles when they're building bridges or other important landmarks. Awesome, look at this bridge. See all the triangles? This bridge is probably pretty strong. Even when trucks and cars and other things cross over it, it stays standing, thanks to the help of a strong shape, like a triangle. Thanks, triangles. Be sure to try this activity at home with all different types of materials. You can use cardboard, paper, popsicle sticks, straws, books. Yeah, that's if kind you of don't, If you don't have a uh, tennis ball at home, you can also use stuffed animals or other books. See which shape is the strongest in your structure. Can't wait to hear. Bye, scientists. Well, Hannah, mm -hmm. not only do architects design the outside of the building, but they also design the inside of the building and figure out what each space, what each area of the space will be used for. That's right, Katie. Architects do this by designing something called a floor plan. A floor plan is like a map that shows the inside of a house or a building. A floor plan uses a bird's eye view or a view from above, like what a bird would see as it was flying high in the sky and looking down. Here is an example of a floor plan for a house. 
This floor plan shows that the kitchen will be over here with a table, two chairs, a sink, and a stove. The bedroom will be over here with a bed and a dresser for clothes. And the bathroom will be over here with a nice tub, a toilet, and a sink. From this floor plan, we can see that the bedroom will be next to the kitchen and the entrance to the house will be over here. This symbol represents a door. Okay, Hannah, let's use this big piece of paper and these shape cutouts to make our very own floor plan for our own dream houses. I'm ready, Katie. Let's go! Yeah! All right, I finished my floor plan. What about you, Katie? I finished mine. Cool. My floor plan looks like this. I have a living room, a kitchen, a bedroom, another bedroom, a bathroom, a hallway, and a front door. What about you, Katie? My floor plan looks like this. I have my kitchen, my dining room, my bathroom, my bedroom, and my dragon room. Oh, I forgot to put a dragon room in my house. Oh, good idea, Katie. Try this at home. Make your own floor plan. You can do a floor plan for a house, a tree house, a hospital, a school, whatever you want, but have fun with it. Be your own architect. Yeah. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Gabby. I have a really cool superstar scientist to tell you about. <gasps> Gabby, I love hearing about superstar scientists. Who is it? Well, her name is Tatiana Bilbao, and she's a Mexican architect. But she's not just any architect. Tatiana designs and builds special homes for people that might not have enough money to buy a home. Wow, that's really important work that Tatiana's doing. It sure is. And what's even cooler is that Tatiana takes the time to talk to the people that she's designing the houses for, to find out more about their lives, hobbies, and families, to make sure that the houses she's building are perfect for them. She also uses lots of recycled materials in her designs too, which is great for our planet. That sounds awesome. I love that Tatiana takes the time to really get to know the people she's building a house for. That way, she can make sure the house is a perfect fit. I'd love to have a house designed by Tatiana myself. Or maybe one by Architect Gabby. Architect Gabby? I made this house. Wow! Gabby, look at this floor plan. Did you make this for your stuffed animals? Yes, I did. I have a feeling. Look, there's a pool made out of candy. I would love a candy pool. It looks like there's a trampoline floor too. Yeah. Oh, Gabby, your stuffed animals are gonna have so much fun in this house. Maybe one day you can design a house for me. I'd like a candy pool too. Well, scientists, architects, be sure to design your own house at home. Could be a tree house, could be an apartment, could be a school, could be anything you want. Architects design so many cool things that are really good fits for people and are really safe, like using those safe shapes like triangles. Gabby, thanks for exploring more about architecture and dream houses in today's episode with me. Thanks, Hannah. We'll see you next time on SCFG Live. Bye. High five, Gabby. Oh, goodness. Boop.